Ooh. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. Well. This well, been, well, well. This has been an p- interesting past week. I'm not going to lie. It's been a lot going on this week. It's just been one of those weeks, I think. Yeah, it has been. How's I'm your... I'm to turn my mic like you. That looks real dead. fancy. <laughs> I am dead as fuck, okay? Maybe this will help with my sound, too. And maybe if you talk a little louder. I don't project. talk loud. You just loud as hell. Everybody ain't that loud. Well, how was your week? My week was good. What you had going on? Um, I worked. The a fight the working party. queen. I know it sounds so weird, doesn't it? Oh my god, that fight was so upsetting, bro. This is not the way we need to end Black History Month, right? This Marie? is not the way, bro. <laughs> this but is I not still the way. stand for him, though. Absolutely, I don't. He's a Trump supporter, for he real. Is? Yes, he's from Alabama, so that makes sense. He's a Trump supporter, he's from Alabama. He got what he deserved. Why does that make sense? Because he's from Alabama, bro. That's like, one I of... mean, I know Alabama is like a Trump yeah. state, but it's just not culture. A Trump state. <laughs> It is. Well, Republican state. I mean, what I, say. I mean, culture. That's his culture. Same thing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, being, to me, being a Trump supporter. But even the black thing. people in Alabama? Yes, there, there are black Trump I'm, supporters. No, y'all. no, we're not. You can't eat on the mic. There I'm are, sorry. Oh, uh, okay. All Absolutely right. Not. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> but all right, cool. Let's so, act like she my mama. I'm dead. But, um, yeah, I feel like the fight, it was very, they should have stopped it sooner because when he hit his ear and he was bleeding, it looked like his equilibrium was off. Like, it looked like he didn't even know where he was. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, he's going to kill this man. Mm. But I'll tell you what. I do like, the only I, only reason I like Fury is because I watch Love Island. It's a show. It's like a British show. Mm. And one of the girls that was on there is dating his little brother. Mm. So I was watching their story the whole time. They were like in Vegas and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was enjoying it. But that was like the only a little bit of me that was rooting for Fury because I like his little brother that mm. was on the Love Island show. So that he's British? He, no, he's Irish, but oh. it's a British show. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, but um, yeah, but I like the fact that when I don't Fury, be knowing nothing about fighters. I don't either, but I know after the fight, like they were showing Fury, and he was thanking God, and he was like do, saying Bible scriptures, and I, th- I really like that because a lot of people in the spotlight they don't tend to do that. Mm-hmm. They don't thank God, so you. A lot of people have like weird and different beliefs. So I fuck with Fury for that reason. So I mean, right. it was not a good fight. I really wanted Wilder to win still because you know support the black people, but That's he didn't. Cool. You know, it is what it is. But did you make money at the fight party? Was it busy? How was it up there? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because I was actually re- really, really pissed off because they asked me to come in earlier than I normally do. Mm. And I'm like, y'all really pushing me. Because you be booked and busy. They just can't ask Dre and Cole to come in early. And that's on period. <laughs> so I just was like, what the fuck? Y'all cutting into my free time, my me time. Yo, me time. Because so I, I mean, went, working twice a week is hard. It really is. I know. It's a struggle. <laughs> it is. I work three times a week. Oop. Oh, no, that's right. We at work right now. Three Amen. Time. <laughs> yes, because yes. Queen. Salute y'all for doing what y'all supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, All well, right. my past week, I pretty much same thing, just working. Uh, the weather has been kind of ugly. Today I weighed myself. I'm officially 20 pounds down. Mm, I've been do- yeah, I've been on my little diet. I got off for a little bit, but I- I've just been drinking a lot of water and just eating healthy. So I'm 20 pounds down. I'm super excited about that. I feel better. My clothes are fitting better. I don't know when I'm just like when I'm like 175, She's 180. She's in love, y'all. I'm dead. She's I, in love. Nah, when you in love, that's, that's when you, when you get the happy, in a happy way. See, the reason, but see, when I'm with him, that's when I eat bad and I'm drinking, I'm doing this. Oh. So I got to prepare for the summer because I know we about to be turned up and lit. And right? I'm here for it, damn it. So. <laughs> but, oh, then yesterday, you know, we went to Kiki's, uh, Kiki and Medina's hosting. Oh, my God. And we had so much fun, We y'all. were so lit. Y'all shout probably out, seen our stories. Yeah, shout out to, um, I met a lot of the fans yesterday. It was one girl that came up to me. It was a few girls that came up to me, so. I know one girl's name was Ashley. Mm-hmm. I met another girl. I can't even remember her name right now. I told her I was going to shout her out because she sent me a story. But shout out to y'all. Thanks to all the Poor uh, poor Minds fans that came out to traffic yesterday for the brunch. It was so much we fun. so We're going to do another fun. brunch. It's going to be a Cocktails Poor Minds brunch very soon. So yeah. keep out on the look. We're going to do that really, really soon for y'all. But we're going to do it when the weather is hot. Because yeah. y'all know hoes get cold and shit now. They said the hoes don't get cold, but I was she, definitely yeah, cold. Yeah, they do. I, you see, I came in with a jacket on. I know. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to do it when the weather gets a little warmer. But it was so much fun. Y'all, like, we had so much fun. Diamond was there. Jasmine was there. We got lit. We just had a good time. Mm-hmm. Like, no drama. Mm-hmm. It was no drama at all. And y'all know we love the drama-free environment. So shout I out to everybody. Like it's never really drama when we be with 
that particular group of people. Yeah, I feel like everybody gets along. Like, yeah. me, you, Diamond, Jazz, Kiki, Medina. Like, mm-hmm. it was so, uh, it so was much fun. fun. So, shout out to Kiki and Medina. Thank y'all for yes. inviting us. We had a good time. We had a blast. So, let's go ahead and get into In, it. Into the real shit. Into the real shit. So, I wanted to talk about this because some things just transpired. And I feel like a lot of times when women on the are... Internet. On the internet, yes. Um... When things, when girls get into it, mm-hmm. the first thing a girl likes to say is, well, I fucked your man. And who cares, I got your bitch? man. She be fucking everybody. Yeah. And my thing, and I feel like, congrats. <laughs> you want a fucking cookie? You look lame. Very. Especially if that man is in a relationship with a girl. Because first of all, this is what I said. No offense, Moran. Oh, God. But I said. Why are you telling Moran? No because offense? he's a man. Oh. A man will fuck concrete as long as it's still wet. I'm not going to fuck concrete. First of all, if it's still wet, you might bro, think about so it. So the men, again, like we said last week, the men y'all fuck with will fuck <laughs> anything moving. But I do agree with what y'all saying. The quote, "I fucked your man," is like saying I graduated, but you were a C student. Like right, exactly. Like, exactly. Like, who cares? Like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Like, everybody be fucking everybody. That is true. I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. Seriously, everybody be fucking everybody. Like, who fucking cares? You want a cookie because you fucked the nigga that I'm with now? And the thing that and makes what did it... he do for you? And then. What makes it even worse is for the nigga to get on social media and be like, no. You're lying. You're lying. Oh, and wow. he's like denying you. Right. Yeah. That's embarrassing as fuck. Like, you look crazy. I feel like women that do that, you just don't realize how sloppy and dirty that makes you look. Because mm-hmm. women do lie on their pussy. They do I've lie. Had, I've, I have had beautiful women lie and say that I fucked them. Oh, yeah. Like, I believe yeah. it. Like, I didn't fuck her. Like, she fine. If right. I fuck her, I said I do. <laughs> right, right, I feel right. like that's not a um, a man or a woman thing. I feel like that's a people thing. Like, there's certain things that men do that women don't do and vice versa. But I feel like lying on your pussy or your dick, that's things that people do. Yeah. Mm. You know, because like I said, I, I know men lie on there. I mean, I know we've been lied on before. Mm-hmm. Like, niggas being like, oh, I had sex with Dre or oh, I had sex with Lex. Man, but I know. Yeah, that shit happened to me in college. Yeah. I was fucking mad as hell. And what the nigga doing now? See, Nothing. God don't like ugly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The same thing happened to me. And the bad thing is, for me, I confronted him. I confronted him. I confronted him, too. I confronted him with my dude. And I walked up to him. I was like, so you fuck me? And he said, yeah. And he was like, whatever you say, man. Whatever <laughs> you say. I was like, Yo, my jaw dropped because I was like, "Are you serious?" I would right pay now? to see that. I would pay buddy to see that. I, and then I'm looking at my dude. He was like, "Damn!" I was like, "No, he's lying." <laughs> whatever you say. He was like, "Whatever you say, Liz. whatever, you, whatever say. you say." I was like, "Wow." So yeah. Anyways, back to the topic. I just feel like it just makes you look kind of corny. Mm-hmm. If anything, like if you got, if you have a way with words and you know how to read a bitch, you gonna read that bitch down and not bring her children into it, not bring her man into it. What? However, you know, certain people don't know how to read people. And this particular person that we talking about... I don't even know if the bitch can read. I think she a little slow. She definitely is slow. So... <laughs> And I feel like somebody else was typing all this shit. I'm fucking dead. I do. Do you feel like it was? I feel like, like it was like one of her best friends or something. Cause she she's not witty. Like she done been on TV and she she not witty like mm-hmm, that. She don't never mm-hmm. be having a good comeback. And if she saw the <laughs> shit she was saying, I was over here laughing oh, my yeah. ass off. No, I'm not gonna lie. And I don't ever laugh at her. When they, I, I, I mean say, at her, right? But not with her. I'm not gonna lie. When they posted the little saw thing, the little saw man riding on the bike, I was laughing at that. Now that was funny. That was funny. I'm not gonna lie. But like I said, <laughs> at the end of the day, I feel like, like I said, we don't like to say names too much, but I feel yeah. like she would definitely get beat up. Because that other <laughs> Absolutely. girl, that other girl don't play. I know she got them hands, bro. You think so? She gonna pop them long ass nails off and beat her ass. <laughs> her and the baby get whooped. <laughs> no, but oh, but with her though, my only issue with her was like, you ain't have to bring, you don't gotta bring people kids in. To yeah, stuff. of course. You know what I mean? Especially when the situation at hand with that specific child. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We all kind of know that that child has disabilities right, and right. stuff like that. So I just think, you know, kids should be off limits, period. But especially children with, like, disabilities. Right, yeah. I think the whole situation was messy. But like I said, ladies, at the end of the day, if you're arguing with a bitch, read her down. Talk about talk about her hair, her nails. Talk about how she grew up. Something. Talk about the <laughs> way she talked, the way she, she dressed. Up. People talk about me all the time. You country ass bitch. You from Orange, Texas. Y'all was excited when y'all got a Chili's. 
Which we was. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the news when we got a Chili's. Not the news. Bitch, when we got a Chili's, it was on the news. I was like, y'all, we got a motherfucking Chili's now. What? I thought that was the most lit thing ever. It was on the news? It was on the news when we got a Chili's. Because it was a big deal. That was like the nicest restaurant like that was in Orange at the time. Is it still there? It's still there, live and kicking. And it's still the only one? No, I think they have more little restaurants now. And then they're getting a Chick-fil-A built now. So shout out to Orange. Moving on up. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is really crazy. Yeah. You were supposed to take me to Orange, and you still haven't took me. I, I haven't been to Orange. I haven't been to Orange in so long. Like, mm. I don't ever go there. I mean, unless it's to see my mom. But my mom most of the time comes to Houston. But I'll definitely take you to Orange. We can go on a little tour. It's going to take, take 10 minutes, but I'll take <laughs> you on a tour now. But, yeah, I just feel like that's something that you could talk about. People be like, you country bumpkin-ass bitch. You want to act like you this or that bitch. You from Orange, Texas. That's yeah. a little read. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to say you you claim you from Houston. Because somebody could do that to me. Mm. Be like, bitch, you claim you from Houston. You're from Orange fucking Texas. I would be <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how you read a bitch. You got to do your research. Just like Eminem did his research on, on 8 Mile. Girl, get the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do your research. When you want to read a bitch, did he not read him for his right? <laughs> he put it on blast that he went to a private school. They, both his parents. Your parents oh are God. married. And his name is Clarence. And his name is Clarence. <laughs> and his name is Clarence. Not Clarence. He did his research. And that's how you, See? you don't have to bring in a man. You don't have to bring in a child. You don't have to do none of that. Yeah, you could just, you know, talk about that person. Talk if about if that y'all person. Beef, if you was beefing at that wig. <laughs> You should have been beefing at that week. Period. Period. So, we're going to move on. That's our advice. That was really uh, geared towards my ladies. Because I really yeah. I really don't see men doing they that. They don't. Now, no, men sometimes do that. Be like, yeah, nigga, that's why I fucked your bitch. Men do do and that. And then the next day, somebody getting shot. I'm dead. Yeah, men be killing each other. <laughs> men just be killing each other. Niggas, will, each step other on a, niggas will step on somebody's no. shoe and then, like, 30 minutes later, they did. <laughs> Sad. Niggas are crazy. Niggas are crazy. That's why we don't never see no Twitter beef with niggas. No, nah, because they, they shoot niggas. They be showing up at the door like, nigga, you ready to die? You ready to die, Bowdy? Yeah. Men are, men are crazy. How do y'all feel about dudes who really died over pussy, though? Because I'll, I'll, like, I'll fight for my girl, but I'll never fight over a girl. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um... um I feel like that's something that been happening since the beginning of time. Just, Whole wars have been started over pussy. Yeah. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's historically what men do. Damn, man. It's fight over pussy. I need a nigga to start a war about my pussy. Nah. Bitch, not no World War Three over nah. Gray nah. Garfield. Nah, we straight. <laughs> he said, nah. Nah, uh, we'll need that. You no. ain't never had it. I'm dead. <laughs> I never pursued it either. <laughs> I know that's right, Marin. <laughs> she tried to read you down. No, I was just <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I feel like, I feel like now, it's like life is really precious. Mm-hmm. So I feel like to kill somebody, there's no coming back from that. Absolutely not. Yeah. It's like, that's a lie. Why can't niggas just fight and whoop somebody ass and get it over with? Mm-hmm. Like, men really take shit far. Yeah, yeah. they do. Like, I understand killing somebody who disrespected your girl, but fighting over pussy, like, it's not yours. I mean, it's even if somebody disrespected your girl, like beat his ass, but you won't gotta kill him. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not condoning it, but I understand, man. Like, I wish somebody would touch on Tiny in front of Ti. Right. I wish yeah. somebody would do that. Yeah. Like, you ask. Well, you know, when him and Mayweather was beefing, exactly. and he came down here, I don't know how, but he had got shot at. Who Mayweather? Yeah. <laughs> and they jumped this DJ. The <laughs> Bitch, hold on. I'm just saying, bro. That's I wish... all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just leave it at that. Yo, that's what I'm saying. I'm but imagine, saying. imagine if one of those bullets would have hit somebody. Like that's his I wife. think that was the point. It was supposed oh, to. That's his God. wife. That's his girl. Yeah. He's, that's some girl. That's he's his wife. That's his wife. Right. I just feel like you know, death is just it's permanent. It I feel is. like anything could be worked out. Mm. Anything could be worked out. Some like, shit can't be worked out. It can. Oh, you can just move on. I feel like some, I'm not gonna lie to you though. Maybe because I'm a little bit, you know. More in the streets than you are. Okay, hood rich Drea. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I just feel like, nah, like for real, when it be coming to like street shit, some shit just really for real can't be worked out. Like somebody got to die. Mm-hmm. That's no, it doesn't have to die. It's how fucked up, but it's just like. You don't have to die. I mean, yeah, you don't, don't have to die. have to, but that's, how, that's the type of mentality that them type of niggas be having. Like somebody got to die about this shit. 
I feel like and not sometimes saying that it be fucked up because it be like casualties of war. Like sometimes the niggas who really the ones that's beefing, not even the ones who end up dying, it be like homeboys, they partners, they mamas. Yeah, mm-hmm. they girlfriends, they kids. Yeah, that should be fucked up. I mean, it's yeah. wrong, but but like, it's like if I can't get to you, I'm gonna get to who I can get. But to. over pussy though, I can see if it's about something like you. You punch my mom in the face. Yeah, I'm dead. something okay. like that. Something That's like that. Something, something like that. Now you, you gotta die. Something. You punch Annie, you gotta die. <laughs> you got to die because if Annie something. not gonna kill you, you gonna kill me. Jackson. <laughs> Jackson next. I don't. I can't shoot a gun. <laughs> Jackson but no, I mean, I don't think that it's okay that niggas have died over pussy, but I'm just saying, like, some niggas be taking that shit serious. But I'm not gonna lie, I feel like to be. I saw a video the other day of a um two girls fighting and she pulled out a gun and shot that girl and she died over their baby daddy. Like I guess they had the same baby daddy. It was mm-hmm. like it went viral. Damn, that's mm-hmm. not see, that's really crazy because that's, crazy. that's your siblings' mom. I mean, your child siblings, mom. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like that's really. And crazy now it's like both, like one dead, one going to jail. Like <laughs> so, not a daddy got to take care <laughs> of both of them. And he probably, he probably can't take care of shit because <laughs> y'all know y'all ain't shit. These baby daddies. I'm Dang. telling you, that's why I said. But I feel like women, when it happens with women, like I think shit kind of be on accident sometimes. Like mm. I always watch that show, uh, Snapped. Not mm-hmm. Snapped. It's another show, and they were always like talking about like. People doing things on accident, like crimes, and it was one time like How this, you do a crime on accident. No, seriously, because like this, these two girls were fighting, and the girl like grabbed something sharp from the ground, like a screwdriver or something. And she was just like swinging. She ended up like piercing the girl's heart on accident, and the girl ended up dying like three days later. But you picked up the screwdriver. I so mean, what was you thinking you was gonna do? I don't with that? know, child. But I feel like when she went to that fight to fight that girl, her intention wasn't to kill her. Well, right. When right. niggas pull up, their intention is to kill that nigga. You you know what I'm saying? I feel like sometimes when things happen between women, sometimes things just escalate. I don't feel like women a lot of times show up somewhere like, I'm going to kill this bitch. Nah, bitches be trying to cut you, though. Yeah, bitches be trying to cut you, then they cut you in the wrong spot and you're dead. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like girls will slice each other face up and mm-hmm. they want to make you ugly, this and that. That happened to my cousin. Yeah, you. what you going to do? Over a nigga, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I just feel like... She was dancing with somebody man in the club and... She was rolling that nigga up. Yeah, <laughs> and the girl got mad and uh, they ended up getting into a fight and the girl had slashed her face up or Dang. whatever. And then after that... Oh. I ain't gonna talk about what happened to the girl. Ooh, we <laughs> you talking that street shit now? But, but that's but it, about something. Like, that's about something. You yeah. cut somebody? Yeah, no. Yeah, man, that's, yeah. That's about something. Who lost? So All I'm gonna know. say is that shots were taken. Ooh, shots were fired. <laughs> hey, shots were fired. Hey, I, I, <laughs> you can't blame that though. Can't blame. Yeah, it. you can't though. Cause so, she got a beat in her face. She still got like the scars and stuff still on her face damn, to this day. That sucks. Mm. Yeah. So let us know how y'all feel about drama over pussy or over dick. That was an mm. accidental topic, too. It was. Um, so I want to talk about Love is Blind. Love mm-hmm. is Blind is a show that's on Netflix right now. And it is literally taking over social media. Everybody is obsessed with it. Everybody loves it. It's such it's a good, good show. So basically, if you don't know what Love is Blind is... Um, they put a bunch of people in like these little pods and they can't see each other Mm -hmm. and they're getting to know each other and they pick a partner just based off their conversations Mm -hmm. and the partner that you pick, you have to marry them. Mm -hmm. So mind you, these people are having conversations. You have to get engaged. Yeah, they get engaged. And then like five days later, some people were like telling them, I love you Mm -hmm. and this and that. It was really intense, really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. So, um, this was shot in Atlanta. Most Mm -hmm. of the people are from Atlanta. Right. And there was one particular couple that kind of just stuck out. They were only on the first two episodes, but their whole situation was so crazy. So everybody's talking about Carlton and Diamond. Mm -hmm. And I want to discuss this not only for what happened between them, but just because something happened yesterday at the brunch, and it kind of goes into this as well. So, (laughs) yes. So we're going to talk about all that. I just want to explain Carlton's situation. So... (laughs) If you watch Housewives or you are on Twitter, you know who Carlton is, first of all. Never, really? Yes. Never thought he was straight. Let me just say that. And that's not anything offensive. I just never thought he was a straight what man. Does he do? What did he do on Housewives? He was um, Cynthia Bailey's assistant on one season, like oh. working at the Bailey agency. And he was very so much... Mm. Drag, trying to drag Kenya. Very flamboyant. It, very flamboyant. And even he was that way on Flaming. Twitter. So he, um, him and Diamond, the girl Diamond, ended up connecting. They like each other, blah, blah, blah. 
they end up going on uh, their honeymoon or whatever. They send them all to Cancun. And then he decides to tell her, you know, at this point, I want to get married. I want to have kids. But I just want to let you know, I used to date men. I was mm-hmm. a bisexual man. Right. I no longer do that. But I feel like that's something that he should have disclosed on the first time that they talked. Right. If you're trying to be honest, and especially during an experiment like that, you know the purpose of this is to get married. Mm -hmm. So once you figured out, I won't say on the first date, but on like their second or third date when they're having conversations and they were pretty much talking about, oh, we're going to pick each other. Right. That's when he should have been like, okay, so I know that we're going to pick each other. So I just want to let you know this about me. Mm -hmm. So you can decide if you want to move on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that's I definitely a lot. feel like that's something that should have been disclosed in the beginning. Like, why would you wait until we sit in face to face, right, to tell me this? Because now at this point, I already have feelings for you. We done had numerous conversations, right? Maybe he fell late. Maybe like, he would. He fell in love with her late. Like maybe when they first started talking, he liked her, but he wasn't. Yeah, in love. I just think that mm-hmm. he. No, I think that he did it for the show. Mm. I don't think he's a straight man at all. At all, mm. because when they started getting into it, he was like, you that sassy side show came out. He said, you need to fix your wig. That shit been sliding back this whole time. I mean, and it was. <laughs> it was. Oh, my God. It Her, was. Her it wig was, like, was terrible. It was, it was sitting way back there. Way back. Like, two flats it, on remember, the Cadillac. Remember that episode of Love and Hip Hop when Ray J had kept uh, switching? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt about that wig. Every, Every time they would show, they would cut to her, it would be farther back. I'd be like, what's going on? Well, I got to watch the show, but... I, now that you say that, I mean... Yeah, I think, that's what I'm saying. I feel like he did it because he's always kind of been like a clout chaser type of person. Mm-hmm. So seeing him on the show, I was like, oh, why is he on here? I'm like, I thought it was cool because I was like, they're doing gay couples. Because I think that it's messed... No. <laughs> you thought they was doing gay Because couples. a lot of times these dating shows, they don't do it for gay people. And I think that's kind of messed up for one. You know what I'm saying? Like they have all these, like Love Island. They don't have any gay couples on these shows. Like The Bachelor, they've never done a gay season for that. Like I feel like... They should do stuff like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But anyway, so I was like, oh, Carlton's on here. They're doing gay couples, too. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I see him talking to Dom, and I'm like, you don't even like pussy. There's no way you're on the show. Maybe he's had a change of heart. Baby, when he when he got mad, he was like, he was. I no way. It. No way. You are still, I think, he, I think he's a versatile. I think he's a top and a bottom. Yeah. Because he definitely has some <laughs> 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 He definitely has some manly things. He has his manly moments. But, baby, I could tell he be tooting that ass up. He looks like a tutor. I just couldn't believe how upset he got with her just because she was trying to figure out if she was going to be okay with it. Like, exactly. you can't be mad at somebody for You can't tell somebody that type of information and then be upset because they're not ready to accept it right then and there and right. move forward. And she was saying she wasn't mad about him being bisexual. Because changes the whole dynamic of right. our relationship. She And she said that she wasn't mad about him being bisexual. She was just mad that he disclosed that information. Because sometimes a lot of people feel like if you omit information, that's the same thing as mm-hmm. lying. I agree with that. You yeah. Know, don't waste people's time. Don't waste people's time. They can't get that back. So, right. I would you, well, it's different for men. So, you would date a bisexual woman, right? Yeah, I've definitely dated bisexual women. But oh, that, niggas like that shit. Right? Yeah, niggas like that. It's, it's, to, to me, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It really isn't. I guess it's diff- It's very different for women, though. Absolutely. Would you date a bisexual man? Knowingly, no. Yeah. I feel like... I couldn't. I couldn't. The thing for me, though, it's not about the act of sex with a man. It's just that, first of all, we already got to compete with bitches. (laughs) Now I got to compete with these bad niggas, too. There's some (laughs) fine-ass niggas out here. I got to compete with these fine-ass niggas and the bad bitches? too much. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, we got to compete with the bad bitches, too, now. Who? Man, like, it's it's weird, but, man, like... when, when you see, women are bisexual. When you see a gay woman, oh, and it's yeah. like, damn, why are you gay? Damn. Yeah. Too, like, I, and do what you want to do. I'm not against it. But it's like, damn, you too fine and too cool to be gay, bro. Nah, that's factual. Because I used to fuck with a girl that was in a relationship with a nigga. And her nigga hated me. Ooh. I'm dead. I was young, though. I was like 22. But yeah, her nigga hated me. Because he knew that I knew they was in a relationship. And I still used to be fucking his bitch. I'm dead. He couldn't do shit about it. He couldn't do shit about it. So every time he would see me out, he would just be like, because he, he couldn't fight me exactly. or nothing. He not going to swing on you. <laughs> he can't beat your ass. He not going to swing. Because <laughs> I'm a girl. So it's like, he used to be so fucking mad. But now we cool. Yeah. You know who it is. I probably do. I just got to. Oh! 
Wow. <laughs> y'all moans. They just cool disclosed now. something from the listeners. Everybody. Well, I want to tell. I, I'll say I could tell y'all, but I mean, wait, y'all more than cool now. Yeah, I know. Ain't she crazy? Her <laughs> life in her I, life I just, just should. comes full circle. Well, with me, I the only reason, like I said, it's not about the um, the sexual act with a man. I don't care about that stuff. Like I don't care about none yeah. of that. I just feel like Garfield can only do so much. Mm. Okay, I can. I gotta compete with these bitches, like I said, and these fine niggas. And I want to talk about what happened yesterday because we were at uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, I traffic. Can't wait to talk about these. And. The whole time, I'm not gonna lie, this nigga was fine, y'all. He Super was, fine. He was he fine. He was cute. And he was, I, he had a little chain on. It's just funny how, it's just funny how you don't really notice things until, until you, something is said. Yeah. Because once I started looking over there for real, I was like, oh, hell no. Right. And we should have noticed that the whole time. But anyways. So yeah, like Diamond, as soon as she came in, she was like, oh, I see a BDB, bitch. I'm and like, we heard he played Football. Yeah, somebody said that he played that he football. Played, yeah, football. So she was like, oh, I see a BDB, bitch. I'm like, oh, we about to go get this nigga for you. Like, we about to find you a BDB. So they so sit like, over in front so of So I'm them. like, okay, Diamond, come sit over here. So y'all know Diamond is crazy. So she started twerking, shaking her ass in front of the nigga. Like, and so when he walked by me, I was like, I was like, well, Diamond, when he walked by, I'm going to grab him. And I'm be like, hey, my friend want to talk to you. She was like, okay. So we taking shots so we can get ready. We was trying to get our, you and know, And I'm sitting on. right there next to them, y'all. So I grab him. I said, hey. I was like, my friend wants to talk to you. And he was like, who? And I pointed, he was like, oh, I'm gay as fuck, honey. Mm. And he definitely did that. I was like, what? And at first, I thought he was lying. I, I was like, too. that nigga ain't gay. Maybe he just don't want to hide. Like, you know That's what I mean? I Maybe thought. he just don't want to Ain't no man finna lie and say they gay. Yeah. That's well, I, true. But then when Unless I looked at ugly. his section. But then once we started looking over there and paying attention to the section, all the niggas over there was like, Mm. And then once he said that to us, I feel like he got more comfortable because he started being like, hey, y'all, but y'all some bad bitches. Like, he wasn't being, like, he was, like, really just kind of sitting there chilling. Like, I didn't get no gay vibes from him, but I respected him because he was real about it. And, yeah. You know, yeah. like, he obviously didn't want none that of us. was funny, But he was, so, he was so cool. He was super fine. And he was cool as fuck. Like, all his friends started coming over there and talking to us. Yeah. But that just, that's how Atlanta but it is. it was a group. But I will say this, and this is why Atlanta be so scary to me. Oh, God. It was so many hood, like hood looking niggas that was over there. Mm -hmm. Like they just looked like regular niggas. They got the Draco. And then when they would start dancing and shit, they was throwing they ass. They really were throwing ass. They, they had really... on like chains and shit. They, and... and they were attractive men. Like attractive enough for like I my, was shook. Like my like like I said, I was like gra I grabbed him for her and I was like, yo, you know, my friend wanna stay what's up. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I finally got my friend a BDB. I don't know how we heard that he played football. Y'all don't know how y'all heard that either. Yeah, she said somebody in the one somebody told her that in the section that he played football. Mm. I guess I don't know if they thought he was somebody else. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. But yeah, that's just how Atlanta is. You just you just never know. You never know. But like I said, I'm glad that he was honest about it and said it straight up. He was, and he was like, "Oh, my man over there." I was like, "Oh, what's oh, he said that? Yeah, he was like, "My man is right over there." But you know, they weren't hanging all over each other. So, because I know when I be in the club with my man, I'm kissing him in the mouth. I do. Oh be yeah, kissing I my man do in the all mouth. it. In the I club. do. Especially I mean, I'm going to twerk on my nigga and shit. Like no, I'm that, definitely but... kissing you in the mouth. Mm -mm. I'm grabbing on dick. I'm doing all that. No. I'm very inappropriate. I know, She's bitch. just marking her territory in public. I, it's not even marking my territory. I just be drunk, and I get horny. And marking your territory. <laughs> Facts. She be trying to let them hoes know. I'm dead. I don't got to let them know. He, he let them know. I'm lying. No, he don't. <laughs> I, I tried know. to sound good. When I be getting drunk, I'm trying to think, have I ever made out with a nigga in the club? Oh, I only made out with one nigga in the club. And you know who that was, too. I don't know who His that crazy was. ass. I can't the, remember. The nigga I used to fuck with in Houston, C first, my first CTE bay. Oh, God. <laughs> he used to grab me by the face yeah. and just tug me down in the club. I swear, if like, I would have saw like, that, Ugh. I would have been laughing so hard. I would have never let you live that down. You know I don't you let you You should never let me live down that situation, period. <laughs> I be forgetting about that. Oh, I always I don't know how. That. I'm dead. Okay, so let us know how y'all feel. If y'all watch Love, and Blind, Love is Blind, please let us know because that is like my favorite show right now. Do you yeah. have, have you finished and caught up yet? No, I haven't finished it Okay, yet. so um, my predictions are, I don't think Gigi and Damien are going to make it. I think he's going to leave her at the um, at the altar. I think Lauren and Cameron are going to make it. I don't think Kelly and, I can't remember his name, Ken or something. I don't think they're going to make it. Um, who else is there? 
Um, I don't think what's her name, Jessica and Mark are gonna make it. Jessica doesn't even like Mark, and I think Barnett is gonna leave Amber because Amber's a brokey. So those are my predictions. Which one is the white, the black girl, and the white boy? Lauren and Cameron. Oh, okay. I love Lauren and Cameron. I love him. Cameron got a little swag. Yeah, he cute. Yeah, and he likes black girls. Like he's mm-hmm. made it clear that he's dated black women before. So I think that Lauren, Lauren just needs a little more time to fall in love with him. Mm-hmm. But I think that's gonna work out for them. So yeah, yeah those are my predictions. Couple. So let me know y'all's predictions and let me know what y'all think. And also, I would like to know have any of y'all ever dated a bisexual man and how was your Do you your think experience? you've ever dated one? Um, I de- I definitely do. I definitely do. I used to tell you that all the time. The dude I was dating when I moved out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he used to toot that ass up. And I used to, you know, I used to, you know, do what he wanted me to do. But I was like, I know you done done this before. I'm trying to think, do I think I've ever. <laughs> well, you, I'm, I'm trying to think. I did. I definitely thought he was. But I liked him. And it was like, it's too late now. And I know a lot of times men don't feel comfortable disclosing that information. But I definitely I felt. I wonder why, though. I mean, because they. Cause if people, it's what you doing, then it's what you no, doing. No, because it's easier said than done. Because a lot of people are very biphobic. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are still homophobic. Like crazy so but you have to give people the option to keep dealing with you after you tell them that information you can't just not tell people stuff because you afraid of what they gonna think that's not fair no i definitely that's why the a's rate so damn high in atlanta i mean but not it's not but a's is not just coming from gay people and gay sex i'm not saying that but i feel like it's a lot of down low people i mean but who be doing shit and then they go i mean but that comes from cheating period Cause you know what I'm saying? Like I could be in a relationship and my man could cheat on me and not use a condom and come back and bring me AIDS and bring or bring me. I mean, a that's HIV. absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Right. But then I don't know. I just feel like it, when it comes to like heterosexual relationships and cheating, if your man cheating on you, you probably know he cheating on you. Not trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you choosing to stay with him, you kind of putting your own self at risk. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of women be knowing that they man cheating, but they just still stay with the nigga. But, uh, you don't know if he using condoms and shit every time he cheat. If you know that he's cheating, you don't know if he's using condoms every time. Right. I feel like when men be fucking with other men and they have a wife or a girlfriend, the women do not be knowing. Mm-hmm. So that's some whole different shit. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, you're you're literally oblivious but you to can, what's but going you can't on. But you say that all women know when they man be cheating. Not all of them, but yeah. I do feel like a lot of women know. Yeah. And they just be choosing to just, you know. Hey. But of yeah. Of course some people don't know though. I felt like, I felt like my ex was definitely bisexual. I, I mean, but I didn't care. I just thought that. I, don't, I didn't think he was doing anything with another guy at the time, but I thought that, you know, I was like, he definitely has dated a man before, definitely has fucked with a man before, but I didn't care. I was just like, whatever. I definitely think I've dated somebody before, too, where I thought, like, probably in the past. But you know what? I will say this. I will say this. He taught me different things in the bedroom, and I still use those little tricks to this day. Mm. So, I, that so he a, improved your sex game. I feel like he definitely did. He definitely did. He taught me little things and little shit here and there. And I was like, okay, I can get with this. That's what's bringing it to our next topic. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. That's gonna bring us into the next topic. We to go get up into the bed. The bed. So <laughs> our topic on the bed today is men who lift their legs up. Mm-hmm. While you sucking his dick, while you playing with the balls, like a nigga just lift his legs up, like and hold them, and hold them, hold his ankles. Okay, Great. not the ankles. Yes, yeah, hold the ankles. You I gotta... ain't never had a nigga hold the ankle. They put it on their hands on the back of their knees. I done had niggas do this. Well, Dre, you said somebody put their feet on your, <laughs> your thighs. Then I had a nigga put his feet on my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> while Moran I, is shaking his while head. I was no. Hell his nah. Okay, let me get that Moran. Moran, yeah. have you ever like a girl was sucking your dick? You never lifted your legs no, up. No, no. But you, you don't like got the urge. No, I've never like. I'm, I'm not into that ass shit on me. But I've never had it either, so I don't know if it's good or trash. Right, yeah. right. But at the same time, usually if I'm getting here, I'm either standing up or laying down. Okay. I like to be comfortable when I get here. Right. I like okay. To be, like, I you prefer like to be to, relaxed. Yeah, I do. I like. I like <laughs> to be, on the couch. be laying down too. Huh? I said they be laying down. Well, I've never put my legs up while getting hit. <laughs> I'm I've dead. Never, well, never. I've definitely had a nigga like start lifting that leg up. But I feel like you we had you... a nigga grab his ankles. Yeah, he grabbed his ankles. You is lying. You Why nigga would I soul. lie about that? She sucked the nigga so. He grabbed his, his ankles. Ar- he grabbed his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> they were bent. <laughs> he had to keep them up. For you know what? Because he wanted me to eat his ass. Oh, well. I feel like I'm that. I'm trying to picture that in my head. 
I feel like this. When a man start lifting his leg up, that means, okay. He wants you to eat his ass. He wants you to do something to his booty. Yeah. Mm. Facts. Like, and it's not just. It's a, always. You just know what it you is. You just know what time it is. You know what time it is. And I'm not going to lie. Either you're going to do this shit or, or you, you ain't. Not. And the first time it happened to me, I was like, what is he doing? Because I had never ate ass before. And I was like, I'm, he, I had never done so butt play. So he grabbed his he ankles? He grabbed his ankles. Yes, he did. He absolutely did. <laughs> I thought it was just like, okay, this is what he likes. So you traumatized? Like, no. Like, no, I just thought it was different. Mm. It was definitely different, but I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was nervous. I was like, oh, my God, I've never done this before. The first time I was nervous, but I, after a while, I just got used to it. Like, that's what he does. So, shit, let me go in. How can I believe he grabbed his ankle? Yeah, girl. I would girl. never be able to look at him the same. <gasps> <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, he grabbed his ankles. But I've had guys, like, not necessarily... I've told them, like, oh, I want to do this to you. And they're like, okay, we can try it. And I've had to lift their legs up because they didn't know, like, what to do. Like, yeah. I've lifted guys' legs up before. And they, like, let me lift it up. They were just kind of like... You could tell... You Niggas could be t- nervous. They, no, this is what I think. They don't be nervous. They be trying to act nervous and act like... <laughs> oh, like it's like a girl when she like, no. Stop. No, yeah, when they be trying to pull the panties yeah, out. Yeah, like, that's what niggas be doing. They be but like, then be lifting up. They be like, man, hold on, man. Ah. Like, nigga, shut up. You know you want to toot that ass up. Yeah, that big mama do what she doing. They be like, hold on, bro. Man, hold on. Nah, niggas definitely do be trying to act like that they don't what they want into man. until, until they happens. let you do this shit. I mean, I'm telling you. I've never had it, but at the same time, I think it would freak me out because that's not what comes to my head. Like, your wanna... soul going to feel like it's leaving your body. I'm telling man. you. I always tell men this. If you like have a girl and she's giving you head and she's incorporating like anal play in there, that's going to be the best nut you ever have, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. We I mean, acting like we know. <laughs> I mean, I'm te- but I'm just saying like the first time like my, you know, my little situation I had with the dude from Houston, like the first time me and him tried that, he was like, he didn't want to at all. Like it took me a lot while to convince him, but once he mm-hmm. did it, he was like, okay, you know, he was like, he got more comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Because it's not, I think men associate that with being gay, but it's like you're doing it with a yeah, woman. Yeah, I don't think anything is gay that you do with, with your a woman. woman. Yeah, you know what I mean? So It's I, when you do it with other men. Yeah, the only time, the only thing that makes you like gay If you letting is doing, a nigga eat your ass, then your nigga, you gay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The only thing that can make you gay is doing things with a man yeah. or somebody with the same sex. So um, I don't mind when men lift their legs up. Like, I don't feel like it's feminine. I don't feel like... It don't make it me just be funny to it me do though, because it be these big bur- burly ass mm. niggas. I mean, it be niggas like fine ass, swole ass niggas. I definitely lift their legs. Up. I definitely lift the football bay legs up. And he thick. He got some. I heavy didn't have legs. to lift mine up. Oh, he was ready. He was ready. He was that like nigga was this. like. <laughs> and I had my eyes closed, y'all. So I'm like, and I look up. He was doing a spread. And he eagle. was like this, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, oh man, <laughs> that's what we doing already. Oh, man. Like, he I was ready, and this was the first time we had sex. I'm mm, like, the first time, yeah. Uh, he was into you. This girl. was the first time, so I was like really shocked because I mean I feel like that's normally something where most guys gotta warm up to, you. right, right. You know what I mean? But I guess but I ain't gonna lie, I'm really freaky. So maybe he was like, he I know she with the shit. Yeah. yeah, I feel like with me and my football bay, like, but I ain't eat his ass not yet. You gotta oh, wait. Yeah. Mm. That yeah, but I feel like when me and when me and my football bay like did it, it was like after a while we had been fucking around, and I had to ask him and you know be like, okay, can we do this? Can we do this? And he was still kind of like, but he still let let me lift them legs up. He did. Mm-hmm. What about that nigga that tooted his booty in your face? I did not eat his ass. <laughs> that was not that. That was booty tame. No, that he did this. No, yes, he show him what he did, and he looked back at me. Oh wow. <laughs> He wow. looked back at me. He was like, "Wow!" So this is Pootie Tang. Pootie Tang me. was the guy that we talked about that asked me to fart in his face. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was sucking his dick one time. Pootie Tang with all Pootie the Tang shit. was wild, and he's so fine. He is fine. He is so fine. I'm just he hit me up the other day talking about. Uh, can I have some? I said, some of what? You talking about legs pee. No. <laughs> Girl, because when I seen him, now don't get me wrong. I, I will eat believe. ass. I'm not ready to eat a nigga ass from the back. How did it happen? Were you not in the room and then you came in no, the room and I was, was in the bed no, like that? No, bitch. I was in the room. <laughs> so how did he, how did you allow him to get Let in Let me that tell position? you what happened. So I was sucking his dick, right? He's laying down. I'm sucking his dick. 
So I get up, because at this point, I'm ready to fuck now. I thought, I don't know what he thought. So he gets up, and I'm thinking we're getting a position. And I'm like, I get on my hands and knees, because I'm thinking he about to get behind me. He get on his hands and knees. And we looking at each other like, <laughs> <laughs> we both on all fours. I'm just playing. That's awkward as <laughs> fuck. No, his ass was in my face. Because he turned around quicker than I was able to. He beat me to the punch. He was like, no, bitch. What if he would have farted in your face? Girl, I, <laughs> look. Because clearly he liked that. He likes butt. Yeah. He loves ass. <laughs> he is, oh, God. I just, I'm just mad that you brought that up. Because I was really, I forgot. I had put, you know when you forget about something because you stored it away? <laughs> He definitely put his ass in my face. Well, because I just was thinking about all the different positions that dudes be getting in when they want you to eat their yeah. ass. But I've never had no nigga do that. To no, me. Mandy, Mandy but said. But I know you had a nigga do that yeah. to you. Well, like I said, I didn't eat his ass because yeah. I was like, I'm not eating your ass because you might fart. I mean, you, they might fart either way. Well, no, I feel like niggas gonna be like. Because even when your legs open like this, you can't clinch if you gotta fart. But I feel like a nigga gonna be like. <laughs> so it might slip out. A nigga gonna say something like, you feel it coming. But I feel like him, he Have would you try ever to farted be... during sex. No. Bless you. You haven't? Mm -mm. Never. Not that I know of. Maybe a little air slipped out that I didn't know about. Yeah, I mean, it has happened. I don't, it has I don't happened think I've to ever... me. Not like a fart, fart, but like a. <laughs> <laughs> did it stink, though? I did. did I, don't stink, think, though? I don't think so because the guy didn't say anything. So I don't think it stuck. Mm -hmm. I think. You know, I was just trying to make sure because I didn't want to say nothing if he wouldn't go say nothing. So I was looking at him like, yeah. oh, my God. Maybe he probably thought it was your vagina. Not if it stunk. I'm, but I'm saying it didn't stink, obviously. So he probably thought oh, it was yeah, your he probably, pussy. No, but he couldn't hear it. That's what I'm saying. It, was oh. a, it wasn't a. <laughs> I mean, have you ever farted during sex and then blame it on your pussy? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. I have. What is wrong with you? Like, oh, man, that's my pussy. When just... I was younger. Though. She was more like, that pussy wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger. I mean, because you can't blame it on that, because especially if your pussy doing the same thing at the same time. You are a sick bitch. I mean, it happens. It's a bodily function. Don't be trying to sit here acting like you ain't never farted during sex. I haven't. I feel like you fucking lying. I haven't. I do you not are like... 30 years old. You've been fucking for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Girl, you better say something. You better say something. Well, she ain't lying. Well. <laughs> And you trying to tell me that you hey, ain't bro. never farted during sex? Leave me alone, bro. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so we're going to move on. Let us know if y'all ever have raised your man's legs oh during sex God. or if he raises his own legs during sex. So uh, we're going to get into the bop of the week. Uh, bop of the week is always what we've been jamming, listening to this past week. You want to go first, Drea? Pop Smoke is going to be my... Bop of the week oh, again. God. This is so sad. Yeah. You know what? And I was just talking about we him were. two weeks ago and I was saying how I just started getting into his music yeah. and I was really fucking with him. And then Moran was saying he feel like he like a new age dipset. Yeah, y'all did And then say somebody that. killed the little homie. He was only 20. That sucks. Crazy. He was a kid. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. I was never a big fan of his music. I'm not going to hide that. But it's definitely still a sad situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to lie when his song was playing in the club of course I was dancing mm -hmm. but I'm not yeah gone. you was over there doing this yeah gang gang shout out Whatever to Diamond yeah. it's, um, I think it's some blood shit but we don't and I think you're a crip well, we, I thought, well, well I, no I'm talking about the gang sign that me and Diamond but we only supposed to do it when Diamond around yeah, yeah, yeah. y'all shouldn't have did that on camera <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that wasn't smart that wasn't smart well that Sorry, to sorry, the everybody. Sorry to everybody. But anyways, uh, yeah, it's a sad situation. I <laughs> you didn't listen get to a shot. <laughs> it's all right. That no, it's not. Nice. We'll throw some C's up to make it even. <laughs> How stupid. Oh, we oh, gonna crip walk at the end. Oh, no, God. Okay, oh, God. so what what is your bop of the week? It's um Dior and Welcome to the Party. I'm dead. Welcome to the party. I'ma just say the whole his and his little new mixtape that dropped, Meet the Woo Too. Yep. Okay, okay. That could be my bop of the week. I haven't really listened to the whole album, but I just feel like, you know, I'm gonna make him my bop, make his music my bop of the week. Cause this okay. is really sad. It is really sad. And like but that's I said, he got with Quavo slept though. Yeah, I feel like in it. I don't want to get on the topic of it, but the reason that I feel like this shit is really fucked up because it wasn't a robbery. Like, they were going in there to kill him. Like, yeah. they wanted him dead. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, they had going on, but the situation <laughs> sucks. I feel sorry for his family and everybody that was around him. He was only 20. Like, 
Think about when you were 20 and like how much you experienced between like yeah. 20 and now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he was you just ain't even really getting started. Like yeah. It. So yeah, prayers up to him and his family. Um, for me, I have I feel like I haven't done a bop of the week with my ladies in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to shout out. I hate her rap name because I think it's kind of stupid. But uh, Mulatto, Sweetie, and Trina have a song called "Bitch from the South," mm -hmm. and this hoe goes so hard. I've never listened to Mulatto's music. Oh, but I like that song. Yeah, I'm a real ass, rich ass bitch Be from the south. south. Yeah, I love that song. I feel like her I like that so song deep. too. Yeah, I feel like it's such a, like a, a a bop. You know, like mm -hmm. something that you can just dance to and just you know talk your shit. And of it course, it's accurate. It's you know what I'm saying. Like Trina was talking her shit, and you know, Sweetie's not. The, bitch, my yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like a song that the girls can bop to, and you can really song. wait. Sweetie's on that record, too? Yeah, yeah, Sweetie's on the record because she's from the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, but she on her line, she says, I'm a real ass rich ass bitch from the West, and uh. she says something that rhymed with West. But, um, but yeah, Sweetie mm. did what she had to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with yeah, Sweetie. Yeah, they be trying to slander Sweetie. Yeah, I like Sweetie. And I like Sweetie. She does, she be dressing her ass off for show. Beautiful girl, beautiful always, girl. She's always very polished from mm -hmm. head to toe, she always looks mm -hmm. good. So, yeah, that's my bop of the week, bitch. Uh, bitch from the south with Trina, Sweetie, and Mulatto. Okay, what you got, Moran? Oh uh, man, right now I've been bumping the boy Jay Worthy from Compton. Ghetto okay. Gospel. Yeah, man. He's a gospel? No, the song is called Ghetto Gospel. Oh, I was about to say, <laughs> praise God. Praise God, <laughs> Moran. It's called Ghetto Gospel. And we need to praise God after throwing up them gang signs. Hey, I'm man. dead. But, hey, shout out to Jay Worthy from uh, the West Coast. Definitely been rocking with you, man. Is he a rapper or a singer? Yeah, a rapper. Okay. Yeah, a rapper from the West Coast. Real chill, real vibe. He be rapping over like soul samples and shit like that. And okay, we're going to get into that. Yeah, we are going to get into that. Well, yeah, we're going to have to check that out for sure. Absolutely. Check it out, y'all. You'll enjoy it. Okay. All righty. So, so now we're going to read the um, advice, people that um, need their advice answered on the show. Make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. That's A-S-K-P-O-U-R-M-I-N-D-S at gmail.com. And ladies, please make sure that you keep the emails as short and brief <laughs> as possible because a lot of y'all be writing in essays. Yeah, y'all be writing And it's really essays. hard for us to read and get through that. We're trying to catch up on a lot of the advice questions. So, yeah, make sure y'all keep sending those in. We're always going to answer y'all's questions on the show. So I'm going to let Drea get it started. Which one did you say was first? Um, Her. Cool, child. Did she say don't say her name? I don't know. Just read it. Cause I was about to say, girl, you out of line. Sorry for this. For sorry, I'm glad you know. Sorry for the length of this email. <laughs> I, I, just that was I just didn't want to leave anything out. Hey, ladies, I want to start by fangirling. You guys are amazing, and I love the vibe you both have. It makes your topics and vibes so easy to listen. So here's my problem. Well, I met a guy about three years ago, and we immediately clicked. Things went so fast with our connection. We both had just gotten out of long relationships a few months prior, and he told me from the beginning that he didn't want a relationship. I honestly was cool with it because he was always with me. We practically moved in together. We went on vacations, and I met some of his family members. Not to mention the sex was the best sex in my life. He also told me a week into us meeting that he likes playing with men and he is bisexual. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. He was just talking was about topic this. today. She was like, you will know why this is relevant later. So a year passed by and I said to him, okay, it's been more than enough time of this casual dating. I want to work towards the future and buying a house and moving on with my life. Are you with it or not? He basically told me that he's sorry he can't give me what I want, what I wanted and said that he really can't commit to me because he wasn't where he wanted to be with his job. I have a great career with some degrees to fall back on while he dropped out of school in 10th grade. So he felt as though... So you got a bisexual man with no education. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My he bad. <laughs> hey, shout out to him for pulling her, though. <laughs> hey, hey, right. Hey, shout out to him. That dick hey. fire. <laughs> but that's game on 10. For real. So he dropped out of school in the 10th grade, so he felt as though because he wasn't on my level, he couldn't be with me. Okay, that shit hurt like hell because he was my best friend and lover. So after we broke up and was... And was it even a breakup because we weren't official? I go to Puerto Rico for two weeks to be surrounded by family just to get my mind off him. When I come back about a week later, this girl was posting him and they were both claiming each other. I was heartbroken. The entire time we were dating, he never once posted me publicly. But I really didn't need that because he was with me all the time and people in his life knew about me. I don't need social media to validate where I stand with anyone. But it was hard seeing him with someone else doing what he couldn't do with me. When I confronted him about her, he said he chose to be with her because she was Colombian. 
what? Uh. She was Colombian like him. And he couldn't see himself being with a Puerto Rican. Mm. After that, we didn't talk for a year. And not going to lie, I would creep to their Instagram and see what they were up to. And it was killing me seeing the man I love just be with someone so freely. Anyway, after us not talking for a year, he called me randomly to ask how I was doing. The conversation turned into what happened with us. And I asked him about the whole Colombian slash Puerto Rican excuse. And he said that he just told me that to shut me up because he connected with this new girl because she lived in China for a while. And she was a teacher over there and he was intrigued by their conversation. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. So then the conversation turned sexual after us talking. I got to catch my breath. Okay. You know, because I thought good. I was almost done and I'm not. Okay. You're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> okay. This is a juicy story. Let's though. go, y'all. So then the conversation turned sexual after us talking and catching up a few times. We eventually met at a hotel where I ended up bringing a strap on and using it on him. Okay. Since I know he's into men and women, I was able to have that experience with him. A few months have passed and he wants to continue the sexual aspect of me and his life, but I'm always conflicted and my emotions are up and down when it comes to him how come i'm only good enough for you to have sex with to fulfill all of your sexual desires but you go home to her how come i'm not good enough how come i hate this girl so much oh. i have all of this hate towards his girl in my heart that consumes me i guess what i'm saying is how do i let it go and let the anger of how i feel about her go because honestly she hasn't done anything to me right. i want to tell her that her man cheating cheated on her with me and he's told me about being with transsexuals behind her back Wow. Ooh, child. I have so many feelings. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's sadness. Sometimes I'm happy because dealing with him behind her back, I know it'll hurt her. Mm. Honestly, I just want to hear your thoughts because this is hard. And I know a lot of people ca might call me dumb. And even typing out this email was hard as hell because rereading it, I feel embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, girl. Yeah, don't be embarrassed. Yes, I'm going to start therapy, which is. I'm, which is what I'm sure a lot of people will say right now. I need some advice as if you guys were my big sisters. Please help me because I want to completely let this go and move on with my life. Do I tell her? Do I move on? Let them live happily ever after? Help a bitch out. And please keep me anonymous. LOL. Now, see, sis, you should have put that at the top. Yes. You lucky I didn't say your name. Yes. Absolutely. If y'all ever want us to keep y'all anonymous, please put that at the at beginning the top of the Or put email. it as the... But I'm glad we didn't say your name. Yeah, but um, absolutely don't say nothing to her. Yeah, don't say nothing to her at all. But this is that's what childish. I feel like me and Drea have had this conversation because that's a normal feeling as a woman to feel like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Let me tell you something, sister, right now. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. Yeah. These are his decisions that he's making, that he doesn't want to be. Fa Obviously, something, if you feel that way, something wrong with her, too, because he's not being faithful to her. Absolutely. So you can't blame yourself for him being a fucked up person. Mm -hmm. And two, he sounds like a user. She, oh, she's living in China. He's bragging on what everybody else mm -hmm. around him does. But you what have, you doing? But what are you doing? What is he doing? He got this girl who lives in China. She's teaching and she's Colombian or whatever. But you're a, a beautiful Puerto Rican woman. You have multiple degrees. degrees and you're doing well for yourself. But not once did you mention anything that he does except that he doesn't have no education. Mm -hmm. So obviously, yeah, you don't even tell us what he do for a living. That's what I'm saying because obviously I think I think you need to realize that you're the prize and he's winning by finessing you and making you feel like you're less than. And then still being with her. And still being with her. He's having his cake and eating it too because you need to just put your foot down and move on. You deserve way better than that. And I think a lot of women don't realize that they deserve better until they get better. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I was. When I was in like my past situation, and I'm not going to lie, this nigga used to do me bad. Drea knows, like... It was a lot of shit going on. It was just, like, really, really bad. Yeah. But it's like, once I realized for myself that I deserved better and mm -hmm. I knew what I was bringing to the table, yeah. I was like, you know what? I don't deserve this. So you have to get fed up. It was like one mo one morning I literally just woke up and I was like, you know what? I can't do this shit no more. So it's, I think therapy is a really good idea. Yeah. You know, but I think you need to realize there's nothing wrong with you. It's things that he, that's wrong with him. Y'all are all being enablers. Everybody who's like, I feel like when people are cheating or doing what they do, the people around them that are allowing this to happen, they're being enablers. So you're enabling him to do this. And, and you never really know, like, the insides of people relationships, mm -hmm. like, what's really, really going on. Like, you never know, girl. For all you know, he might, you already said he don't have no education, and so he probably doesn't have a good job. And you never know, she might be sliding him some bread and she's some shit that you're not doing. You don't right. never know why a dude 
is really sometimes choosing another woman over you, and you can't take it personal. And thank, I just feel like thank God you dodged a bullet. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It sounds like God gave you a layup. Like, girl, for real, <laughs> yeah. she, she sounds fine as hell. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not she, sound fine she as hell. She sound fine as hell. She Puerto Rican got she read. sound fine as she, hell. She I'm Puerto the one Re- that was reading. I mean, well, the way you described the situation. She did you were reading job. real sexy well. Yeah. And she's in China and she's a teacher. I was just saying, nah, hey, Puerto Rican Bay, hey, let that shit go. Yeah, let that shit go, sis. And we know, we always say the poor girl. Then you doing the freaky dinky shit to him that she probably don't even know he into this shit. Right, that's what but I'm saying, girl. You, cut him off. He ain't claiming her. Hell no. He mm-hmm. obviously, you really have the upper hand if you think about it. Just leave him. Just leave just him. Just stop talking to that nigga. Ghost cut, him block because. him. Block him and cut him off because it's not even beneficial. You, yeah. uh, he ain't even giving you no and money. Then, and you know, no that's me and Lick's problem free philosophy. Yes, this star problem free. <laughs> Philosophy, get that back. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. it needs to be beneficial. I can't you know lie. What I, mean? I don't condone shit like that, but I can't even lie. It's, it's the fact you're getting, you're doing so much, and you have nothing. To you're show. getting you nothing. nothing. You have nothing to show for it, child. So, so like, yeah, yeah. Damn. I feel like, and like we always say, we know. Every, every time I meet fans of the show, they're always some baddies and they're always real cute. Mm-hmm. And, you know, confident girls because I think that's the kind of people that we attract to listen to our show. So I already know, you know, if you listen to the show, you already know what to do. We know you a bad bitch, girl. We know you, you a bad bitch. tap back into it. Tap back into it Fuck and get it together. Niggas. It's so many BDBs out here. Girl, go get you a BDB. I swear you will never look back ever again. That's what happened with me. I got over, it's nothing like some new fresh dick that's taking you on trips and paying for shit and just treating you like a princess. Let these niggas treat you like a queen because they will. The right nigga the definitely right will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think therapy is a great idea. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you. Definitely keep us posted and updated with everything. Okay, I'm going to read the second letter. This is short. Thank you, girl. <laughs> it Thank says, you. my relationship is fairly new, but I'm in love, and I think he's the one. We've only been dating since November. We spent the holidays together and exchanged gifts. I met his family. He just hasn't met mine yet. He's a good man. Come from He comes from a good family and works a regular job. Here's where things get complicated. I live in Houston, and he lives in New Orleans. I want us to move in with each other expeditiously. <laughs> I was single for four years prior to this relationship, so I don't want to waste time. I'm really traumatized from past relationship, and he's teaching me how to love again, so I trust him. The dilemma is I'm really over Houston since I've graduated, and the long distance is hard on me. To him, Houston is a new city with bright opportunities. I do not feel the same. I want to move back to New Orleans. We already disagreeing on the city, so now I'm second-guessing the idea. I need my man here with me, though, so I need to decide. My question is, do you think it's too soon for us to be moving in together? Um, I'll say this. I don't know how old you are. That's my thing. I think that's a big deal. So I feel like dating me, like in my thirties, I feel like, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, okay, if I'm dating somebody for like a certain amount of time and we're in the same city, I feel like that's a conversation that needs to be had. Right. If we've been dating each other for like, you know, six months to a year, that's something, that's a conversation that needs to be had. But like, if you're in your early twenties, like I said, I don't know how old you are, but that can be a little soon because your taste change, things change, yeah. people mature at a different rate. So if you if you're in your twenties, I would say kind of hold off on it. But um, I will say this: I don't know what y'all do career wise, but Houston versus New Orleans, it would be smart for y'all to be in Houston, right? I feel like New Orleans, there's not really much going on out there. Like, yeah, I don't know. So I know that you would, I know that you want to move back to New Orleans and things like that. But I feel like Houston is one of the best cities, so it would be smart. Career wise, I feel like for y'all to be in Houston, and then there's just I feel like there's more to do in Houston. It just seems like a more fun city. Like I go to New Orleans. I mean, all yeah, the time. I definitely feel like Houston is more fun. Yeah, personally, I mean, New Orleans got good food. Yeah, and but... barely that. I mean, last time I <laughs> in went in comparison I in... to the rest of Louisiana. Yeah, honestly, that's yeah. why I was just like barely that. It's really touristy now. So I mean, I don't want to get in too much in your business, but right? Yeah, I feel like it's not too soon if you feel comfortable to have that conversation as long as he's on the same page. Because one thing I feel like as women, a lot of times we run men off by rushing into things too soon. So make sure y'all are on the same page and that he even wants to do that, that he even wants to move. Like, make sure that's something that he wants to do. And if that is, I feel like the conversation should continue because it's like, why not? You only get one life. So I feel like you can't put a time on anything. Like, I know people who are married for 20 years that got divorced and hate each other. I have some friends I know, her parents, they met 
Um, they got a, they got married a month after they met, and they've been together for 15 years. So you really can't put time on anything. It's like sometimes you just know, and you know, you just got to jump out on a leap of faith. If it don't work out, okay, you'll just move out and go get y'all own place. It ain't the end of the world. That's just how I view things. Yeah. I feel Sometimes like you do. You just have to go ahead and do it because you don't want to like not do stuff and then wonder what would have happened if you right and look it. back and regret it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's great advice. Yes. I'm gonna read more one more question because okay. I feel like we we're kind of like backed up. A little yeah, bit. we are. So this is a short one. So it says um, questions that need answers. Oh, hey Lex and Drea, please don't use my name. Love you guys and your banter so much. I like to know if y'all could please give some free game. What do you think is most important? What type of man? To look for and how to initiate slash ask them to give you money. We already answered this one. Oh, we did? Yeah. I think I did this one when Donald was on the show. Oh, okay. Did, have you read this one? Sorry, y'all. Um, it's not really a question. That one wasn't really a question either. Oh, you know what? Read this one. Read this one. Oh, it's a long one. You know what? We just going to get we, caught up next yeah. week. Because we <laughs> that's a long one, too. Okay, so like I said, if y'all have any questions, email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. Do you have an item of the week this week? Mm, no. Okay, it's I okay. Know. I definitely do. Um. Okay, so y'all know I wax every month, and I get waxed every four weeks. But, like, recently, I've had some problems down there. Like, my skin has been really, really dry. So... It was like last time I got waxed, like on my bikini line, it was like when she ripped up the strip, I had a little bleeding from my pores, which if you get waxed, that's kind of normal sometimes. Mm -hmm. But like basically just my skin has been really dry down there. So she gave me some really good advice. So um, I want to tell y'all, I'm going to get into the item of the week in a second, but if you have dry skin, you have to stop taking hot showers. I did not know that. That affects your skin. That makes your skin really, really dry. I know we um, love hot steaming showers, but that's really bad for your skin if you're not, like, doing some kind of cold therapy on your skin and closing up those pores. Like, if you notice, like, yourself getting ingrown hairs down there, or ingrown hairs anywhere, like, on your legs, it's because you're taking these hot-ass showers, and that's opening up your pores for, like, bacteria and dirt to get in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So try to take, like... Um, like warm showers or like cold showers. I've been taking cold showers. So that's one thing that's been working for me. But I got a jade roller and I've been using my jade roller in that area, in like my bikini area. Mm-hmm. So I've basically been doing like a cold therapy treatment and it has worked like wonders. Like mm-hmm. my skin has gotten real, real soft down there. Mm-hmm. Real, real soft. Um, I made some rose water. I made actual rope with rose petals and some water. And I've been spraying it in that area too. Like not in there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But like on my skin. And it has just worked wonders. Like seriously, like my skin was so dry down there. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because Garfield, you know what I'm saying? It, the weather been getting a little Garfield. So she was like, mm-hmm. yeah, the skin is just really dry. You got to do some better treatments. So, yeah, just using road wa- rose water, homemade rose water. Because, you know, when you buy it from the stores, of course, they have other stuff yeah. in there. So just go get you a, some flowers from Kroger's, pick off the um, the petals, put it in the spray bottle, set it in there, let it let it set for like three or four days, spray your coochie, use your J roller, and you'll be good to go. You know, you, did you notice I tried to keep my comments about Garfield to myself? Today. You did so good. Good job. Yay. Hey. Trying to bring up Garfield hey. today. The Savage was on like three today. Which I is know. Great. So good sweet. I love how nice she treats me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, anything else y'all have to add? I don't. I don't think I have anything else to add. Do you have anything else to add? I don't. I'm about to take a shot of bamboo. I lied. I'm dead. So, um, once again. That's probably why I'm being nice. Because <laughs> I'm sober. Because you're sober. We, you are so much better. I'm such a sweet girl when, when you're sober. sober. So, yeah, we'll see y'all next week. Thank y'all for tuning in. Bye, Bye y'all. y'all.